Coming up tonight, a recent college graduate dies in a traffic fatality. We've got the details. Meantime, activists warn of an immigration raid scheme. We've got more on that. And later, a former attorney general states her position on marital rape. This is Eyewitness News, the weekend edition. Eyewitness News is brought to you by BTC. Switch today to save $860 for the year on the largest fiber network in the Bahamas. Good evening, everyone. I'm Devontae Hanna. Thank you so much for joining us, topping the weekend edition. Police are now on the hunt for two males believed to be responsible for the abduction and sexual assault of a 16-year-old girl just after midnight this morning. According to reports, the victim was walking in an area off Blue Hill Road when two men in a black Nissan March approached her. Now, the men reportedly abducted the victim, taking her into bushes near Munnings Drive and sexually assaulted her before making good their escape. Investigations are said to be ongoing. Meantime, a woman is dead tonight, becoming the country's latest traffic fatality around 1 a.m. on Saturday. According to reports, the victim was driving a red 2019 Kia Rio on West Bay Street in the area of Poop Deck Restaurant when she attempted to overtake a male driving a black 2014 Audi A6. A collision occurred, causing the victim to lose control of her vehicle, resulting in her colliding into a tree. The victim was trapped in her vehicle and subsequently, the jaws of life had to be used by fire services. She died on the scene while the male driver received no injuries. The victim has been unofficially identified as 23-year-old Jada Swan a class of 2022 graduate of Middle Tennessee State University where she received a master's degree. Meantime, a woman is dead tonight, becoming the country's latest traffic fatality around 1 a.m. on Saturday. According to reports, the victim was driving a red 2019 Kia Rio on West Bay Street in the area of Poop Deck Restaurant when she attempted to overtake a male driving a black 2014 Audi A6. A collision occurred, causing the victim to lose control of her vehicle, resulting in her colliding into a tree. The victim was trapped in her vehicle and subsequently, the jaws of life had to be used by fire services. She died on the scene while the male driver received no injuries. The victim has been unofficially identified as 23-year-old Jada Swan a class of 2022 graduate of Middle Tennessee State University where she received a master's degree. Days after, a police officer was shot in the face during a high-speed chase in the Garden Hills area, National Security Minister Wayne Monroe is urging criminals to think twice before engaging the police in a war with weapons. Monroe asserts authorities have a zero-tolerance mindset towards gunmen seeking to contest authorities while in their line of duty. These are men and women who leave their homes um, with the fervent hope that they will return safely to their homes. On that morning, um, Corporal McKenzie didn't return safely to his home because he found himself in doctor's hospital. They're the line between you and I, correct? People are supposed to be rightly concerned with crime, with all of these people content to drive around our streets with handguns, with assault weapons, the police are the line between us and them. If they are willing to fire on the police, judge you and I. And so they're the line between you and I, so we don't have to go prepared to confront this. And so I expect them to confront it when they meet it. To do otherwise would be to be in dereliction of their duties. Well, he is adding that police will put more boots on the ground to ensure that they do their best to curb crime. And so the public has to steel itself for the fact that we're increasing police presence. That is what people want. We up the presence with the 20 donated Jeep Explorer, the, the Explorer Jeeps. We're shortly to take delivery of 100 patrol truck, light trucks. When that presence is up even further, the criminal element has a choice to put down your arms or run the high risk of being encountered by the police. And the choice is wholly theirs. Well, in other news tonight, as the country continues to battle with illegal migration issues, including the hot-button topic of shanty towns, one private consultant is speaking out for those occupants, revealing that criminals are impersonating immigration officers to steal from those living in shanty towns. 
Speaking to Eyewitness News after a meeting with government officials, Haitian pastors and other stakeholders, Luby Georges says the issue was not raised during that particular meeting, but he hopes that the Ministry of Labor and Immigration will address the issue. The issue of, you know, the, one of the issues that wasn't raised was the, the nighttime immigration raids. Now, with us knowing that the, what, what crime is in the country right now, We've seen instances where persons have impersonated uh, immigration officers in the night, um, you know, to be able to uh, go in and accost individuals and to rob and that sort of stuff. And so the nighttime raids, we really think, is a major issue. Well, the former Attorney General Allison Maynard Gibson supporting the move to criminalize marital rape through legislation. This as government continues to have consultation with the church who remains divided over the issue. Now, Maynard Gibson says it's an issue that must be addressed. Well, I'll say that very clearly there is something that, I, that is marital rape. I don't think that any human being should be subjected to that. And again, I think that the necessary legislation, and um, this is legislation. I hear people talking about, oh, we have this there, we have it there. It is so fundamental that it requires a systemic approach and we need to have specific legislation that deals with it, how we will, how we will prosecute it, how we will punish it and so forth, so that our society sends the strongest message about what we will tolerate in a, in a civilized society, in a democracy. Well, she adds that the religious community is not to blame for the holdup or divide, but stays, but states that government must make the seemingly difficult decision to change this legislation in this regard. I, I'll say this, that I do note what, how, unfortunately, ministers of religion derailed the referendum process. And so this, these kinds of things can happen, but I don't cast blame because at the end of the day, my relationship with God is between me and God. And so I have to decide whether I will support women having citizenship, having the right to pass on their citizenship, whether I will support the notion that there should be no marital rape in a marriage. Marriage doesn't contemplate, healthy marriage doesn't contemplate rape. That's me, it's my decision. I can't blame pastors for that. All right, we'll on to some other news tonight. A warning from police following a development trend to of fraudsters reporting to be from a financial institution. Assistant Superintendent Anthony McCartney says, in times past, individuals would call customers and inform them that their account has been hacked and prompting them to transfer their money to another account. Now, McCartney says, this scam has become even more advanced. We've seen in instances where persons have been asked to download certain applications to their electronic devices. Um, definitely that is a no-no. In doing so, you would compromise your sensitive information um, being transferred to the fraudster and there and they can control or, or use your sensitive information to lock you out of your account and transfer funds from you. That said, he gives this advice so that members of the public can avoid this major inconvenience and eventual loss of funds. If you are contacted by somebody from a financial institution, um, that should raise a red flag. Um, in the normal course of business, if you have an inquiry, we would also always invite you to go into your financial institution and inquire from there. Well, if you've got a news tip or if you've seen news in the making, please call the Iron News hotline at 397-6397. And we also invite you to send your letters to the editor for publication on all of our social media platforms at eyewitnessnewsbahamas at gmail.com. And if you're watching on our Facebook or YouTube page, good evening. Please share your thoughts about today's stories in the comment section below. But still to come tonight, customs declarations are going digital. So that's according to authorities. And later... Bahamas Air is in talks to begin interregional flights. We've got more on that, but first, here's a check on tonight's weather forecast.
Welcome back to the weekend edition. If you're planning on traveling soon, you may want to download the Bahamas Customs Department newest exam app to declare your goods so that you can do away with that piece of paper. Our Tyler Simonet has more in this report. The Bahamas Customs Department launching a new app that will serve as a digital customs declaration platform. The app, called Exempt App, will allow all returning residents at all ports in the Bahamas to fill out their C-17 declaration forms and pay customs duty electronically. It's a change that's only an option now, but custom plans on going completely paperless in two months. Part of our mission statement is to improve the effectiveness and efficiency of our operations and we believe that this new app will do just that. The app was created to facilitate the electronic submission of baggage declarations. We know it as the C-17s. Presently, exam exempt is active and being used by visitors and residents alike. The app is expected to be mandatory for all Bahamians and residents on June 12, 2023. The app will require one-time registration with an email and a password. Once logged on, you can scan your passport in the app to upload all of your information. As soon as this is done, your account is officially active. To complete a declaration in exempt, you have to select the form, C-17, fill out all your aircraft information, Select your items from a drop-down list and their values. Upload your invoices. Decide if you wish to use an exemption or not to use an exemption. And then you have the option to pay online through the app or you can submit and once you get to your destination, you access the cashier in the hall. According to Customs Revenue Officer Nadia Newton-Williams, the app was made to save travelers time and make the process of declaring your goods smoother. After filling out the form, travelers' luggage will still be checked. Other features on the app include being able to search for custom duty rates and scanning barcodes while shopping abroad to see which rate will be applied. She also responds to questions on what will happen if the app malfunctions. It is our intention for everyone to use the app. We do hope to have some assistance for those persons in the future. I do feel that it will save at least maybe half an hour, depending. Everything in life, we have to have a backup. So we will have to revert back to paper if for some reason the app is not up. But that would also depend on how long we foresee the app being down or the electricity being down or there's so many factors at play. The app is now available in Android and iOS app stores. You can visit bahamascustoms.gov.bs for more information. Tyler Simonet. Eyewitness News. All right, well, some good news there, but on to some greater news. Bahamas Air is now touting a regional presence and a desire to expand even further thanks to this weekend's Carifta Games. Now, according to the airline's deputy managing director, Prince Store Bahamas Air is already in discussion with Caribbean countries to provide inter-regional travel, which he believes will prove fruitful. Now, Bahamas Air became one of the golden sponsors of the Carifta Games, becoming the official airline of the meet, bringing athletes from across the region to the Bahamas to compete. And according to Store, it uncovers what is possible in the future. We have a flight that's scheduled for the Jamaica Carnival that's coming up in two weeks. So that is now on our website, and we're selling, and we're telling folks, buy your tickets because it's going fast. Um, we're, and, uh, we're also in discussions with other countries. There's nothing concrete as yet, but we're in discussions in possibly assisting with providing air transport. We have a number of flights throughout the Caribbean, bringing in the uh, other countries for Carifta. And now Mr. Sands and his group is happy, so we're happy. And it's all, it's all towards uh, celebrating the, the, the country's anniversary and our anniversary. And we want to make a good impression on all those countries that are coming in. And everybody's pretty happy. And what we're excited about is in us doing our duty with bringing in all those athletes. Bahamas Air now has a peasant presence throughout the Caribbean. Well, the Agricultural Development Organization relaunched its backyard farming program last week, distributing 50 starter kits to the Bahamas Feeding Network and Hands for Hunger, two of the largest feeding programs in the country. Now, former executive of the Bahamas Feeding Network, Philip Smith, says it's an initiative that they hope to expand up to other organizations. The idea is to get them involved in the distribution of backyard kits as well as the management of the backyard farming. And we believe that 
you know, them being on the ground, feeding persons every day, they would be in a very, very good position to um, know the people that are in need that can truly benefit from these backyard kits or having a backyard farm. So that's the beginning. So we started with Bahamas Feeding Network and Hands for Hunger. But we are open now. We will be talking with other feeding organizations to also use them to do exactly what Hands for Hunger and Bahamas Feeding Network is doing. Well, Smith adds that the work does not stop there as they hope to take these kits into the family islands as well. We're going to do it throughout, the, in, in fact, in all the family island, we will continue to do that. So that's backyard kits and then we're also doing community farms where we are setting up greenhouses in various areas. And I mentioned today how we have a relationship with Urban Renewal. We just established a relationship with Urban Renewal where we will um, set up um, community farms with greenhouses in all of the urban renewal centers, and that's in Nassau as well as the family island. Meantime, having trouble decorating your small rental space? Well, in this week's Lifestyles with Leah, a local interior designer gives us some tips and tricks to turn your small apartment into a space that will feel right at home. Aliyah Cooper has the details in this report. When it comes to decorating and home improvements, a lot of people like to do it themselves. But we all need a little help and inspiration from time to time. You're about to meet veteran interior designer Linda Stubbs, who's letting all of her best secrets out of the bag tonight when it comes to decorating smaller spaces like an apartment or efficiency. Enjoy where you live. All right. And make that the best uh, space you can afford. To, to, to have. She says the key is to create a space that makes your heart sing, somewhere that you can find comfort and peace, and a place that is a true reflection of your style. And to get the perfect bang for your buck, she suggests looking at used furniture. In fact, some of the used furniture that you can buy have more value because one, chances are they're made out of real wood. A lot of in a lot of cases all right and you have to be aware of that too how to determine whether a piece of furniture you're purchasing is real wood or pressed wood another tip Stubbs suggests is combing through antique stores and patio sales to find unique pieces for your home I'll give you an example of a piece that I bought that was it's not a um, just a regular piece it's an antique, but I painted it. I use this to paint a mahogany piece in blue. So let me just step aside and let you see. She also advises that you stray away from the heavy drapery and opt for something more climate appropriate. We're in a tropical climate and um, we have the warm weather, what, practically 90% of the year. All we simply need is something, an element that is going to give us privacy, and then an element that just gives you a nice finish. And if you're the entertaining type, Stubbs gives an example of how to maximize your small space to host a group of friends for dinner. This, in my opinion, was one of the most interesting parts of her home. What I came up with was the idea of a banquet. I had this corner and I said, well, this will be my eating corner. But you're also seeing my favorite collection of gold frames. And I have, you know, I have room to fill this wall up with gold frames. I just love it. So if you have an old gold frame and you don't want it, you could, I'll take it. <laughs> All right. But here I have a round table. And ergonomically, in a, round, in a small space, rounded furniture works better rather than a lot of square corners. After more than 20 years of decorating an array of spaces, Sub shares where she wants to take her career in the future. What I enjoy more and what I think I'll do in my retirement is teach and, and so that I train and, and share my gifts with people so that they can make a career from it in the future. Because what I'm finding now is that the more you can do with your hands practically, you can save so much money all lifelong. Because if I had to pay the florist and pay the painter and pay the seamstress to sew my cushions, and if I had to pay for everything, 
I won't have very much. So if you've just moved in your new apartment, hopefully you've learned a thing or two for when it's time to start decorating. And thank you, Miss Dubs, for opening up your beautiful home and sharing your wisdom with us. Until next time, Leah Cooper, Eyewitness News. Well, definitely some great tips there, Leah and Miss Stubbs. But coming up to the, in tonight's Sunday feature, fashion students from BTVI are showcasing their coursework. We got the sneak peek. That'll be right after this break. Well, welcome back to the weekend edition. Now on to the students from the Bahamas Technical and Vocational Institute, the fashion consultancy class. They put their work over the semester on full display in a fashion show at Echo at Bahama. Our Lauren Smith caught up with some of the budding designers before their big reveal. Here's that report. New York, London, Milan, and Paris are known for their iconic fashion shows. While the students of the BTVI Fashion Consultancy class happily shared that their Rocking the Road to 50 fashion show, which was held last night, was one of a kind. Now we visited the students on Friday in their classroom at the institution during their final preparation. And Samantha Murphy told us that the show was a requirement for their class, but it took on a life of its own. But it is time for us to celebrate our own and see exactly what it is that we as Bohemians, how talented we are, exactly or what we can offer the world as, as well as what we can offer here. And most of the time we are not even celebrated here. We have to go off and then have to come back. But I wanted to celebrate all that fashion. After all, I'm a part of it. Another student, Sandra Ferguson, walked us through the planning process. Finding a venue, because we went to a lot of different places that we thought we could have done it. Some were not up to par for what we really wanted. And then we got that beautiful call from Bahama saying we can have it there. And so... That was awesome. Two designers who are former students of BTVI showcased their work last evening, Kevin Evans and Candy Smith. They both showcased 20 designs. We spoke with Smith of Candy Cane Collection, who shared that she was excited to have her work alongside Evans. Some different collections, but there's one main piece I was working on. It's called the Boss Bay Collection. And um, I've been designing that for like about a few months. But I got a call from Miss Pinder to come in and do the fashion show. show uh, the, sorry, the fashion show. So I hurried it along. So like about five to six pieces from the Boss Bay Collection will be featured in the fashion show. Murphy and Ferguson shared what makes the BTVI fashion course such a special one. It, it's, it's a myriad of, of different things you, you're going to learn. 
even if you don't know how to sew straight, you get to learn and you, and you're guided each step of the way. So it, there's no need to be afraid of starting it because you will be helped along the way. And VI should not be taken lightly and should not just be pushed aside as, oh yeah, that technical school. Oh yeah, this technical school have, has, has done well for itself. Laurencia Smith, Eyewitness News. Well, congratulations to all of those students, but that does it for us in the weekend edition. For all of us here at Eyewitness News, I'm Devontae Hanna. Thank you so much for joining us. Good night and have a great week. Your cute little newborn, toddler, or young one needs protection. The BAF endowment policy allows for a beneficiary to receive the specified amount of cash in the event of the death of the insured before the maturity. Endowment at age 18 and age 20 are specially designed for children's education. Parents and legal guardians are encouraged to purchase these plans to ensure that cash is on hand for continued education. Maturity at 20, 30, or up to age 65 are designed for persons saving for a specific project and are also attractive for retirement. Life is a mosaic of moments. Moments of high energy and moments of peace. Moments of hard work and moments of surprise. Let Aeropost, the Bahamas' newest and biggest online store, usher you into life's moments with over 20 million products. Get the fully landed price and just add to cart. Visit Aeropost.com, register for an account and choose a delivery location from over 20 plus hub stores and smart parcel locker locations all over New Providence. It's that simple. So whether you're preparing for your first game, making a presentation on a new job, putting a smile 